Rodents function by interacting with other molecules. Knowing the three-dimensional structure of a protein is an important part of understanding protein function, and modern structural biology often includes insights into molecular interactions. However, the protein structures we have examined so far are deceptively static. Proteins are dynamic molecules. Their interactions are affected in physiologically important ways by sometimes subtle, sometimes striking changes in protein conformation. In this chapter and the next, we explore how proteins interact with other molecules and how their interactions are related to dynamic protein structure. We divide these interactions into two types. In some interactions, the result is a reaction that alters the chemical configuration or composition of the interacting molecule with the protein acting as a reaction catalyst or enzyme. We discuss enzymes and their reactions in Chapter 6. In other interactions, neither the chemical configuration nor the composition of the interacting molecule is changed and such interactions are the subject of this chapter. It may seem counterintuitive that a protein's interaction with another molecule could be important if it does not alter the associated molecule. Yet, transient interactions of this type are at the heart of complex physiological processes such as oxygen transport, immune function, and muscle contraction all topics we examine here. The proteins that carry out these processes illustrate several key principles of protein function, some of which will be familiar from Chapter 4. The functions of many proteins involve the reversible binding of other molecules. A molecule bound reversibly by a protein is called a ligand. A ligand may be any kind of molecule, including another protein. The transient nature of protein-ligand interactions is critical to life, allowing an organism to respond rapidly and reversibly to changing environmental and metabolic circumstances. A ligand binds at a site on the protein called the binding site, which is complementary to the ligand in size, shape, charge, and hydrophobic or hydrophilic character. Furthermore, the interaction is specific. The protein can discriminate among the thousands of different molecules in its environment and selectively bind only one or a few types. A given protein may have separate binding sites for several different ligands. These specific molecular interactions are crucial in maintaining the high degree of order in a living system. This discussion excludes the binding of water, which may interact weakly and non-specifically with many parts of a protein. In Chapter 6, we consider water as a specific ligand for many enzymes. Proteins are flexible. Changes in conformation may be subtle, reflecting molecular vibrations and small movements of amino acid residues throughout the protein. A protein flexing in this way is sometimes said to breathe. Changes in conformation may also be more dramatic, with major segments of the protein structure moving as much as several nanometers. Specific conformational changes are frequently essential to a protein's function. The binding of a protein and ligand is often coupled to a conformational change in the protein that makes the binding site more complementary to the ligand, permitting tighter binding. The structural adaptation that occurs between protein and ligand is called induced fit. In a multi-subunit protein, a conformational change in one subunit often affects the conformation of other subunits. Interactions between ligands and proteins may be regulated, usually through specific interactions with one or more additional ligands. These other ligands may cause conformational changes in the protein that affect the binding of the first ligand. The enzymes represent a special case of protein function. They bind and chemically transform other molecules. The molecules acted upon by enzymes are called reaction substrates rather than ligands, and the ligand binding site is called the catalytic site or active site. As you will see, the themes in our discussion of non-catalytic functions of proteins in this chapter binding, specificity, and conformational change are continued in chapter 6, with the added element of proteins participating in chemical transformations. 5.1 Reversible Binding of a Protein to A Ligand Oxygen binding proteins. Myoglobin and hemoglobin may be the most studied and best understood proteins. They were the first proteins for which three dimensional structures were determined, and these two molecules illustrate almost every aspect of that critical biochemical process the reversible binding of a ligand to a protein.
This classic model of protein function tells us a great deal about how proteins work. Oxygen can bind to a heme prosthetic group. Oxygen is poorly soluble in aqueous solutions, see table 2 to 3, and cannot be carried to tissues in sufficient quantity if it is simply dissolved in blood serum. Also, diffusion of oxygen through tissues is ineffective over distances greater than a few millimeters. The evolution of larger, multicellular animals depended on the evolution of proteins that could transport and store oxygen. However, none of the amino acid side chains in proteins are suited for the reversible binding of oxygen molecules. This role is filled by certain transition metals, among them iron and copper, that have a strong tendency to bind oxygen. Multicellular organisms exploit the properties of metals, most commonly iron, for oxygen transport. However, free iron promotes the formation of highly reactive oxygen species, such as hydroxyl radicals that can damage DNA and other macromolecules. Iron used in cells is therefore bound in forms that sequester it and or make it less reactive. In multicellular organisms especially those in which iron, in its oxygen-carrying capacity, must be transported over large distances iron is often incorporated into a protein-bound prosthetic group called heme or heme. Recall from chapter 3 that a prosthetic group is a compound permanently associated with a protein that contributes to the protein's function. Heme consists of a complex organic ring structure, protoporphyrin, to which is bound a single iron atom in its ferrous, Fe2+, state, Fig, 5 to 1. The iron atom has six coordination bonds, for to nitrogen atoms that are part of the flat porphyrin ring system and two perpendicular to the porphyrin. The coordinated nitrogen atoms, which have an electron donating character, help prevent conversion of the heme iron to the ferric, Fe3 plus state. Iron in the Fe2 plus state binds oxygen reversibly, in the Fe3 plus state it does not bind oxygen. Heme is found in many oxygen-transporting proteins, as well as in some proteins, such as the cytochromes, that participate in oxidation reduction, electron transfer, reactions, Chapter 19. Figure 5. Figure 5 to 2 The free heme molecules, heme not bound to protein, leave Fe2 plus with two open coordination bonds. Simultaneous reaction of 1O2 molecule with two free heme molecules, or two free Fe2 plus, can result in irreversible conversion of Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. In heme containing proteins, this reaction is prevented by sequestering each heme deep within the protein structure. Thus, access to the two open coordination bonds is restricted. In globins, one of these two coordination bonds is occupied by a side chain nitrogen of a highly conserved his residue referred to as the proximal his. The other is the binding site for molecular oxygen, O2, Fig, 5 to 2. When oxygen binds, the electronic properties of heme iron change. This accounts for the change in color from the dark purple of oxygen-depleted venous blood to the bright red of oxygen-rich arterial blood. Some small molecules, such as carbon monoxide, CO, and nitric oxide, NO, coordinate to heme iron with greater affinity than does O2. When a molecule of CO is bound to heme, O2 is excluded, which is why CO is highly toxic to aerobic organisms, a topic explored later, in box 5 to 1. By surrounding and sequestering heme, oxygen-binding proteins regulate the access of small molecules to the heme iron. Globins are a family of oxygen-binding proteins. The globins are a widespread family of proteins, all having similar primary and tertiary structures. Globins are commonly found in eukaryotes of all classes and even in some bacteria. Most function in oxygen transport or storage, although some play a role in the sensing of oxygen, nitric oxide, or carbon monoxide. The simple nematode worm Cenerobditis elegans has genes encoding 33 different globins. In humans and other mammals, there are at least four kinds of globins. The monomeric myoglobin facilitates oxygen diffusion in muscle tissue. Myoglobin is particularly abundant in the muscles of diving marine mammals such as seals and whales, where it also has an oxygen storage function for prolonged excursions undersea. The tetrameric hemoglobin is responsible for oxygen transport in the bloodstream.
The monomeric neuroglobin is expressed largely in neurons and helps to protect the brain from hypoxia, low oxygen, or ischemia, restricted blood supply. Cytoglobin, another monomeric globin, is found at high concentrations in the walls of blood vessels, where it functions to regulate levels of nitric oxide, discussed in chapters 12 and 23. Myoglobin has a single binding site for oxygen. Myoglobin, Mr. 16700, abbreviated MB, is a single polypeptide of 153 amino acid residues with one molecule of heme. As is typical for a globin polypeptide, myoglobin is made up of eight alpha helical segments connected by bends, fig, 5 to 3. About 78% of the amino acid residues in the protein are found in these alpha helices. Any detailed discussion of protein function inevitably involves protein structure. In the case of myoglobin, we first introduce some structural conventions peculiar to globins. As seen in figure 5 to 3, the helical segments are named A through H. An individual amino acid residue is designated either by its position in the amino acid sequence or by its location in the sequence of a particular alpha helical segment. For example, the His residue. Coordinated to the heme and myoglobin the proximal His is His 93, the 93rd residue from the amino terminal end of the myoglobin polypeptide sequence and is also called His F8 the eighth residue in alpha helix F. The bends in the structure are designated A, B, C, D, E, F, F, G, and so forth, reflecting the alpha helical segments they connect. Figure 5 to 3 myoglobin. The eight alpha protein ligand interactions can be described quantitatively. The function of myoglobin depends on the protein's ability not only to bind oxygen, but also to release it when and where it is needed. Function in biochemistry often revolves around a reversible protein ligand interaction of this type. A quantitative description of this interaction is a central part of many biochemical investigations. In general, the reversible binding of a protein, P, to a ligand, L, can be described by a simple equilibrium expression. The reaction is characterized by an equilibrium constant, Ka, such that where Ka and KD are rate constants, more on these below. The term Ka is an association constant, not to be confused with the Ka that denotes an acid. Dissociation constant, P62, that describes the equilibrium between the complex and the unbound components of the complex. The association constant provides a measure of the affinity of the ligand L for the protein. Ka has units of M1, a higher value of Ka corresponds to a higher affinity of the ligand for the protein. The equilibrium term Ka is also equivalent to the ratio of the rates of the forward association and reverse dissociation reactions that form the PL complex. The association rate is described by the rate constant Ka and dissociation by the rate constant KD. As discussed further in the next chapter, rate constants are proportionality constants, describing the fraction of a pool of reactant that reacts in a given amount of time. When the reaction involves one molecule, such as the dissociation reaction PLP plus L, the reaction is first order and the rate constant, KD, has units of reciprocal time, S1. When the reaction involves two molecules, such as the association reaction P plus LPL, it is called second order, and its rate constant, Ka, has units of M1S1. Key Convention Equilibrium constants are denoted with a capital K and rate constants with a lowercase k. A rearrangement of the first part of equation 5 to 2 shows that the ratio of bound to free protein is directly proportional to the concentration of free ligand. When the concentration of the ligand is much greater than the concentration of ligand binding sites, the binding of the ligand by the protein does not appreciably change the concentration of free, unbound, ligand that is, L, remains constant. This condition is broadly applicable to most ligands that bind to proteins in cells and simplifies our description of the binding equilibrium. We can now consider the binding equilibrium from the standpoint of the fraction, Y, of ligand binding sites on the protein that are occupied by ligand. Substituting Ka, L, P, 4, PL, C, 5 to 3, and rearranging terms gives.
The value of Ka can be determined from a plot of Y versus the concentration of free ligand L fig 5-4A. Any equation of the form X equals Y slash Y plus Z describes a hyperbola, and Y is thus found to be a hyperbolic function of L. The fraction of ligand binding sites occupied approaches saturation asymptotically as L increases. The L at which half of the available ligand binding sites are occupied, that is, Y equals 0.5, corresponds to 1 slash Ka. Figure 5 to 4. It is more common and intuitively simpler, however, to consider the dissociation constant, KD, which is the reciprocal of Ka, KD equals 1 slash Ka, and has units of molar concentration, M. KD is the equilibrium constant for the release of ligand. The relevant expressions change to Table 5, some examples, protein, avidin, insulin receptor, anti, nickel binding, calmod, 2 times 10, color bars, enzyme cofactor by A, A. When L equals KD, half of the ligand binding sites are occupied. As L falls below KD, progressively less of the protein has ligand bound to it. 4. 90% of the available ligand binding sites to be occupied, L, must be 9 times greater than KD. In practice, KD is used much more often than Ka to express the affinity of a protein for a ligand. Note that a lower value of KD corresponds to a higher affinity of ligand for the protein. The mathematics can be reduced to simple statements. KD is equivalent to the molar concentration of ligand at which half of the available ligand binding sites are occupied. At this point, the protein is said to have reached half saturation with respect to ligand binding. The more tightly a protein binds a ligand, the lower the concentration of ligand required for half the binding sites to be occupied, and thus the lower the value of KD. Some representative dissociation constants are given in Table 5 to 1. The scale shows typical ranges for dissociation constants found in biological systems. Worked ex dissociation. Two proteins, A and B. What is the dissociation constant? Solution. The binding of oxygen to myoglobin follows the patterns discussed above. However, because oxygen is a gas, we must make some minor adjustments to the equations so that laboratory experiments can be carried out. More conveniently, we first substitute the concentration of dissolved oxygen for L in equation 5 to 8 to give. As for any ligand, KD equals that O2, at which half of the available ligand binding sites are occupied, or O2, 0 0.5. Equation 5 to 9 thus becomes. In experiments using oxygen as a ligand, it is the partial pressure of oxygen, P2, in the gas phase above the solution that is varied, because this is easier to measure than the concentration of oxygen dissolved in the solution. The concentration of a volatile substance in solution is always proportional to the local partial pressure of the gas. So, if we define the partial pressure of oxygen at O2, 0 0.5 as P50, substitution in equation 5 to 10 gives. A binding curve for myoglobin that relates Y to P2 is shown in figure 5-4B. Protein structure affects how ligands bind. The binding of a ligand to a protein is rarely as simple as the above equations would suggest. The interaction is greatly affected by protein structure and is often accompanied by conformational changes. For example, the specificity with which heme binds its various ligands is altered when the heme is a component of myoglobin. For free heme molecules, carbon monoxide binds more than 20,000 times better than does O2, that is, the KD or P50 for CO binding to free heme is more than 20,000 times lower than that for O2, but it binds only about 40 times better than O2 when the heme is bound in. Myoglobin For free heme, the tighter binding by CO reflects differences in the way the orbital structures of CO and O2 interact with Fe2+. Those same Orbital structures lead to different binding geometries for CO and O2 when they are bound to heme, fig, 5-5ab. The change in relative affinity of CO and O2 for heme when the heme is bound to a globin is mediated by the globin structure. Figure 5-5 five five steric effects caused by ligand binding to the heme of myoglobin.
A. Oxygen binds to heme with the O2 axis at an angle, a binding conformation readily accommodated by myoglobin. B. Carbon monoxide binds to free heme with the CO axis perpendicular to the plane of the porphyrin ring. C. Another view of the heme of myoglobin, showing the arrangement of key amino acid residues around the heme. The bound O2 is hydrogen bonded to the distal his, his E7, his 64, facilitating the binding of O2 compared with its binding to free heme. Source C, derived from PDBID 1 MBOSE Phillips J, MOL Biol, 142 531, 1980. When heme is bound to myoglobin, its affinity for O2 is selectively increased by the presence of the distal his, his 64, or his E7 in myoglobin. The Fe O2 complex is much more polar than the Fe CO complex. There is a partial negative charge distributed across the oxygen atoms in the bound O2 due to partial oxidation of the interacting iron atom. A hydrogen bond between the imidazole side chain of his E7 and the bound O2 stabilizes this. Polar complex electrostatically, Fig. 5-5C. The affinity of myoglobin for O2 is thus selectively increased by a factor of about 500, there is no such effect for facio binding in myoglobin. Consequently, the 20,000-fold stronger binding affinity of free heme for CO compared with O2 declines to approximately 40-fold for heme embedded in myoglobin. This favorable electrostatic effect on O2 binding is even more dramatic in some invertebrate hemoglobins, where two groups in the binding pocket can form strong hydrogen bonds with O2, causing the heme group to bind O2 with greater affinity than CO. This selective enhancement of O2 affinity in globins is physiologically important and helps prevent poisoning by the CO generated from heme catabolism, see chapter 22, or other sources. The binding of O2 to the heme in myoglobin also depends on molecular motions, or breathing, in the protein structure. The heme molecule is deeply buried in the folded polypeptide, with limited direct paths for oxygen to move from the surrounding solution to the ligand binding site. If the protein were rigid, O2 could not readily enter or leave the heme pocket. However, rapid molecular flexing of the amino acid side chains produces transient cavities in the protein structure, and O2 makes its way in and out by moving through these cavities. Computer simulations of rapid structural fluctuations in myoglobin suggest there are many such pathways. The distal his acts as a gate to control access to one major pocket near the heme iron. Rotation of that is residue to open and close the pocket occurs on a nanosecond, 10-9s, time scale. Even subtle conformational changes can be critical for protein activity. The distal is functions somewhat differently in some other globins. In neuroglobin, cytoglobin, and some globins found in plants and invertebrates, the distal his is directly coordinated with the heme iron at the location where ligands must bind. In these globins, the O2 or other ligand must displace the distal his in the process of binding, with a hydrogen bond again forming between the distal his and O2 after the binding occurs. Hemoglobin transports oxygen in blood. Nearly all the oxygen carried by whole blood in animals is bound and transported by hemoglobin in erythrocytes, red blood cells. Normal human erythrocytes are small, 6 to 9 mu m in diameter, by concave discs. They are formed from precursor stem cells called hemocytoblasts. In the maturation process, the stem cell produces daughter cells that form large amounts of hemoglobin and then lose their organelles nucleus, mitochondria, and endoplasmic reticulum. Erythrocytes are thus incomplete, vestigial cells, unable to reproduce and, in humans, destined to survive for only about 120 days. Their main function is to carry hemoglobin, which is dissolved in the cytosol, at a very high concentration, 34% by weight. In arterial blood passing from the lungs through the heart to the peripheral tissues, hemoglobin is about 96% saturated with oxygen. In the venous blood returning to the heart, hemoglobin is only about 64% saturated. Thus, each 100 ml of blood passing through a tissue releases about one-third of the oxygen it carries, or 6.5 ml of O2 gas at atmospheric pressure and body temperature.
Myoglobin, with its hyperbolic binding curve for oxygen, Fig. 5-4b, is relatively insensitive to small changes in the concentration of dissolved oxygen and so functions well as an oxygen storage protein. Hemoglobin, with its multiple subunits and O2 binding sites, is better suited to oxygen transport. As we shall see, interactions between the subunits of a multimeric protein can permit a highly sensitive response to small changes in ligand concentration. Interactions among the subunits in hemoglobin cause conformational changes that alter the affinity of the protein for oxygen. The modulation of oxygen binding allows the O2 transport protein to respond to changes in oxygen demand by tissues. Hemoglobin subunits are structurally similar to myoglobin. Hemoglobin, Mr. 64500, abbreviated HB, is roughly spherical with a diameter of nearly 5.5 nanometers. It is a tetrameric protein containing four heme prosthetic groups, one associated with each polypeptide chain. Adult hemoglobin contains two types of globin, two alpha chains, 141 residues each, and two beta chains, 146 residues each. Although fewer than half of the amino Acid residues are identical in the polypeptide sequences of the alpha and beta subunits. The three-dimensional structures of the two types of subunits are very similar. Furthermore, their structures are very similar to that of myoglobin, Fig. 5 to 6, even though the amino acid sequences of the three polypeptides are identical at only 27 positions, Fig. 5 to 7. All three polypeptides are members of the globin family of proteins. The helix naming convention described for myoglobin is also applied to the hemoglobin polypeptides, except that the alpha subunit lacks the short D helix. The heme binding pocket is made up largely of the E and F helices in each of the subunits. Figure 5 to 6 comparison of the quaternary structure of hemoglobin features strong interactions between unlike subunits. The alpha-1 beta-1 interface and its alpha-2 beta-2 counterpart involves more than 30 residues and its interaction is sufficiently strong that although mild treatment of hemoglobin with urea tends to disassemble the tetramer into alpha-beta dimers, these dimers remain intact. The alpha-1 beta-2 and alpha-2 beta-1 interface involves 19 residues, fig. 5 to 8. The hydrophobic effect plays the major role in stabilizing these interfaces, but there are also many hydrogen bonds and a few ion pairs, or salt bridges, whose importance is discussed below. Figure 5 to 7 The amino acid sequences of whale my Figure 5 to 8 Hemoglobin undergoes a structural change on Binding oxygen X-ray analysis has revealed two major conformations of hemoglobin, the R state and the T state. Although oxygen binds to hemoglobin in either state, it has a significantly higher affinity for hemoglobin in the R state. Oxygen binding stabilizes the R state. When oxygen is absent experimentally, the T state is more stable and is thus the predominant conformation of deoxyhemoglobin. T and R originally denoted tense and relaxed, respectively, because the T state is stabilized by a greater number of ion pairs, many of which lie at the alpha-1 beta-2 and alpha-2 beta-1 interface, fig. 5 to 9. The binding of O2 to a hemoglobin subunit in the T state triggers a change in conformation to the R state. When the entire protein undergoes this transition, the structures of the individual subunits change little, but the alpha-beta subunit pairs slide past each other and rotate, narrowing the pocket between the beta subunits, fig. 5 to 10. In this process, some of the ion pairs that stabilize the T-state are broken and some new ones are formed. Max Peretz proposed that the TR transition is triggered by changes in the positions of key amino acid side chains surrounding the heme. In the T-state, the porphyrin is slightly puckered, causing the heme iron to protrude somewhat on the proximal his, his F8, side. The binding of O2 causes the heme to assume a more planar conformation, shifting the position of the proximal his and the attached F helix, fig. 5 to 11. These changes lead to adjustments in the ion pairs at the alpha-1-beta-2 interface.
Figure 5 to 9 some ion pairs that stabilize the T state of deoxyhemoglobin. A. Close up view of a portion of a deoxyhemoglobin molecule in the T state. Interactions between the ion pairs is HC3 and ASPFG, one of the beta subunit, blue, and between LIS C5 of the alpha subunit, gray, and is HC3, its alpha carboxyl group, of the beta subunit are shown with dashed lines. Recall that HC3 is the carboxyl terminal residue of the beta subunit. B. Interactions between these ion pairs, and between others not shown in, A, are schematized in this representation of the extended polypeptide chains of hemoglobin. Source A. PDBID 1 HGA R. Figure 5 to 10 the T are tr Figure 5 to a Hemoglobin binds oxygen cooperatively. Hemoglobin must bind oxygen efficiently in the lungs, where the PATU is about 13.3 kPa, and release oxygen in the tissues, where the PATU is about 4 kPa. Myoglobin, or any protein that binds oxygen with a hyperbolic binding curve, would be ill-suited to this function, for the reason illustrated in, figure 5 to 12. A protein that bound O2 with high affinity would bind it efficiently in the lungs, but would not release much of it in the tissues. If the protein bound oxygen with a sufficiently low affinity to release it in the tissues, it would not pick up much oxygen in the lungs. Figure 5 to 12 A sigmoid, cooperative. Hemoglobin solves the problem by undergoing a transition from a low affinity state, the T state, to a high affinity state, the R state, as more O2 molecules are bound. As a result, hemoglobin has a hybrid S-shaped, or sigmoid, binding curve for oxygen, fig, 5 to 12. A single subunit protein with a single ligand binding site cannot produce a sigmoid binding curve even if binding elicits a conformational change, because each molecule of ligand binds independently and cannot affect ligand binding to another molecule. In contrast, O2 binding to individual subunits of hemoglobin can alter the affinity for O2 in adjacent subunits. The first molecule of O2 that interacts with deoxyhemoglobin binds weakly, because it binds to a subunit in the T. State. Its binding, however, leads to conformational changes that are communicated to adjacent subunits, making it easier for additional molecules of O2 to bind. In effect, the TR transition occurs more readily in the second subunit once O2 is bound to the first subunit. The last, fourth, O2 molecule binds to a heme in a subunit that is already in the R state, and hence it binds with much higher affinity than the first molecule. An allosteric protein is one in which the binding of a ligand to one site affects the binding properties of another site on the same protein. The term allosteric derives from the Greek allos, other, and stereos, solid, or shape. Allosteric proteins are those having other shapes, or conformations, induced by the binding of ligands referred to as modulators. The conformational changes induced by the modulators in turn convert more active and less active forms of the protein. The modulators for allosteric proteins may be either inhibitors or activators. When the normal ligand and modulator are identical, the interaction is termed homotropic. When the modulator is a molecule other than the normal ligand, the interaction is heterotropic. Some proteins have two or more modulators and therefore can have both homotropic and heterotropic interactions. Cooperative binding of a ligand to a multimeric protein, such as we observe with the binding of O2 to hemoglobin, is a form of allosteric binding. The binding of one ligand affects the affinities of any remaining unfilled binding sites, and O2 can be considered as both a ligand and an activating homotropic modulator. There is only one binding site for O2 on each subunit. So the allosteric effects giving rise to cooperativity are mediated by conformational changes transmitted from one subunit to another by subunit-subunit interactions. A sigmoid binding curve is diagnostic of cooperative binding. It permits a much more sensitive response to ligand concentration and is important to the function of many multi-subunit proteins. The principle of allostery extends readily to regulatory enzymes, as we shall see in Chapter 6. Cooperative conformational changes depend on variations in the structural stability of different parts of a protein, as described in Chapter 4.
The binding sites of an allosteric protein typically consist of stable segments in proximity to relatively unstable segments, with the latter capable of frequent changes in conformation or intrinsic disorder, Fig. 5 to 13. When a ligand binds, the moving parts of the protein's binding site may be stabilized. In a particular conformation, affecting the conformation of adjacent polypeptide subunits. If the entire binding site were highly stable, then few structural changes could occur in this site or be propagated to other parts of the protein when a ligand bound. As is the case with myoglobin, ligands other than oxygen can bind to hemoglobin. An important example is carbon monoxide, which binds to hemoglobin about 250 times better than does oxygen. The critical hydrogen bond between O2 and the distal his is not quite as strong in human hemoglobin as it is in most mammalian myoglobins, so the binding of O2 relative to CO is not augmented quite as much. Human exposure to CO can have tragic consequences, box 5 to 1. Cooperative ligand binding can be described. Quantitatively, cooperative binding of oxygen by hemoglobin was first analyzed by Archibald Hill in 1910. From this work came a general approach to the study of cooperative ligand binding to multi-subunit proteins. For a protein with N binding sites, the equilibrium of equation 5 to 1 becomes. And the expression for the association constant becomes. Figure 5 to 13 structural changes in a multi-subunit protein undergoing. Cooperative binding to ligand. Structural stability is not uniform throughout a. Protein molecule. Shown here is a hypothetical dimeric protein with regions of high, blue, medium, green, and low, pink, stability. The ligand binding sites are composed of both high and low stability segments, so affinity for ligand is relatively low. The conformational changes that occur as ligand binds convert the protein from a low to a high affinity state, a form of induced fit. The expression for Y, CECN 5 to 8 is rearranging, then taking the log of both sides, yields. Where equation 5 to 16 is the Hill equation, and a plot of log, Y slash, 1 Y, versus log, L, is called a Hill plot. Based on the equation, the Hill plot should have a slope of N. However, the experimentally determined slope actually reflects not the number of binding sites, but the degree of interaction between them. The slope of a Hill plot is therefore denoted by NH, the Hill coefficient, which is a measure of the degree of cooperativity. If NH equals 1, ligand binding is not cooperative, a situation that can arise even in a multi-subunit protein if the subunits do not communicate. An NH of greater than 1 indicates positive cooperativity in ligand binding. This is the situation observed in hemoglobin, in which the binding of one molecule of ligand facilitates the binding of others. The theoretical upper limit for NH is reached when NH equals N. In this case the binding would be completely cooperative. All binding sites on the protein would bind ligand simultaneously, and no protein molecules partially saturated with ligand would be present under any conditions. This limit is never reached in practice, and the measured value of NH is always less than the actual number of ligand binding sites in the protein. An NH of less than 1 indicates negative cooperativity, in which the binding of one molecule of ligand impedes the binding of others. Well-documented cases of negative cooperativity are rare. To adapt the Hill equation to the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin we must again substitute Pa24, L, and for KD. Hill plots for myoglobin and hemoglobin are given in, figure 5 to 14. Two models suggest mechanisms for cooperative. Binding. Biochemists now know a great deal about the T and our states of hemoglobin, but much remains to be learned about how the T or transition occurs. Two models for the cooperative binding of ligands to proteins with multiple binding sites have greatly influenced thinking about this problem. Figure 5 to 14 Hill plots for oxygen binding to myoglobin and hemoglobin. Box 5 to 1 Medicine Carbon Monoxide, a stealthy killer. Lake Powell means that CO figure 1 relationship by complement of tissues. Figure 2 several when CO 
The first model was proposed by Jacques Monod, Jeffries Wyman, and Jean-Pierre Changes in 1965, and is called the MWC model, or the Concerted Model, FIG, 5-15A. The concerted model assumes that the subunits of a cooperatively binding protein are functionally identical, that each subunit can exist in, at least, two conformations, and that all subunits undergo the transition from one conformation to the other simultaneously. In this model, no protein has individual subunits in different conformations. The two conformations are in equilibrium. The ligand can bind to either conformation, but binds much more tightly to the R state. Successive binding of ligand molecules to the low affinity conformation, which is more stable in the absence of ligand, makes a transition to the high affinity conformation more likely. In the second model, the sequential model, FIG, 5-15b, proposed in 1966 by Daniel Koshland and colleagues, ligand binding can induce a change of conformation in an individual subunit. A conformational change in one subunit makes a similar change in an adjacent subunit, as well as the binding of a second ligand molecule, more likely. There are more potential intermediate states in this model than in the concerted model. The two models are not mutually exclusive. The concerted model may be viewed as the all-or-none limiting case of the sequential model. In Chapter 6 we use these models to investigate allosteric enzymes. Hemoglobin also transports H plus and CO2. In addition to carrying nearly all the oxygen required by cells from the lungs to the tissues, hemoglobin carries two end products of cellular respiration H plus and CO2 from the tissues to the lungs and the kidneys, where they are excreted. The CO2, produced by oxidation of organic fuels in mitochondria, is hydrated to form bicarbonate. Figure 5 to 15 Two general models for the interconversion of inactive and active forms of a protein during cooperative ligand binding. Although the models may be applied to any protein including any enzyme, Chapter 6, that exhibits cooperative binding, we show here each individual. This reaction is catalyzed by carbonic anhydrase, an enzyme particularly abundant in erythrocytes. Carbon dioxide is not very soluble in aqueous solution, and bubbles of CO2 would form in the tissues and blood if it were not converted to bicarbonate. As you can see from the reaction catalyzed by carbonic anhydrase, the hydration of CO2 results in an increase in the H+. Concentration, a decrease in pH, in the tissues. The binding of oxygen by hemoglobin is profoundly influenced by pH and CO2 concentration, so the interconversion of CO2 and bicarbonate is of great importance to the regulation of oxygen binding and release in the blood. Hemoglobin transports about 40% of the total H plus and 15% to 20% of the CO2 formed in the tissues to the lungs and kidneys. The remainder of the H plus is absorbed by the plasma's bicarbonate buffer. The remainder of the CO2 is transported as dissolved in CO2. The binding of H plus and CO2 is inversely related to the binding of oxygen. At the relatively low pH and high CO2 concentration of peripheral tissues, the affinity of hemoglobin 4. Oxygen decreases as H plus and CO2 are bound, and O2 is released to the tissues. Conversely, in the capillaries of the lung, as CO2 is excreted and the blood pH consequently rises, the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen increases and the protein binds more O2 for transport to the peripheral tissues. This effect of pH and CO2 concentration on the binding and release of oxygen by hemoglobin is called the Bohr effect, after Christian Bohr, the Danish physiologist and father of physicist Niels Bohr, who discovered it in 1904. The binding equilibrium for hemoglobin and one molecule of oxygen can be designated by the reaction. But this is not a complete statement. To account for the effect of H plus concentration on this binding equilibrium, we rewrite the reaction as where HHB plus denotes a protonated form of hemoglobin. This equation tells us that the O2 saturation curve of hemoglobin is influenced by the H plus. Concentration, fig, 5 to 16. Both O2 and H plus are bound by hemoglobin, but with inverse affinity. When the oxygen concentration is high, as in the lungs, hemoglobin binds O2 and releases protons.
when the oxygen concentration is low, as in the peripheral tissues, H plus is bound and O2 is released. Figure 5 to 16. Oxygen and H plus are not bound at the same sites in hemoglobin. Oxygen binds to the iron atoms of the hemes, whereas H plus binds to any of several amino acid residues in the protein. A major contribution to the Bohr effect is made by his 146, his HC3, of the beta subunits. When protonated, this residue forms one of the ion pairs to ASP94, ASPFG1, that helps stabilize deoxyhemoglobin in the T state, Fig, 5 to 9. The ion pair stabilizes the protonated form of his HC3, giving this residue an abnormally high pKa in the T state. The pKa falls to its normal value of 6.0 in the R state, because the ion pair cannot form, and this residue is largely unprotonated in oxyhemoglobin at pH 7.6, the blood pH in the lungs. As the concentration of H plus rises, protonation of his HC3 promotes release of oxygen by favoring a transition to the T state. Protonation of the amino terminal residues of the alpha subunits, certain other his residues, and perhaps other groups has a similar effect. Thus we see that the four polypeptide chains of hemoglobin communicate with each other not only about O2 binding to their heme groups, but also about H plus binding to specific amino acid residues. And there is still more to the story. Hemoglobin also binds CO2, again in a manner inversely related to the binding of oxygen. Carbon dioxide binds as a carbamate group to the alpha amino group at the amino terminal end of each globin chain, forming carbaminohemoglobin. This reaction produces H+, contributing to the Bohr effect. The bound carbamates also form additional salt bridges, not shown in Fig. 5 to 9, that help to stabilize the T-state and promote the release of oxygen. When the concentration of carbon dioxide is high, as in peripheral tissues, some CO2 binds to hemoglobin and the affinity for O2 decreases, causing its release. Conversely, when hemoglobin reaches the lungs, the high oxygen concentration promotes binding of O2 and release of CO2. It is the capacity to communicate ligand binding information from one polypeptide subunit to the others that makes the hemoglobin molecule so beautifully adapted to integrating the transport of O2, CO2, and H plus by erythrocytes. Oxygen binding to hemoglobin is regulated by 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate. The interaction of 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate, BPG, with hemoglobin molecules further refines the function of hemoglobin and provides an example of heterotropic allosteric modulation. BPG is present in relatively high concentrations in erythrocytes. When hemoglobin is isolated, it contains substantial amounts of bound BPG, which can be difficult to remove completely. In fact, the O2 binding curves for hemoglobin that we have examined to this point were obtained in the presence of bound BPG. 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate is known to greatly reduce the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. There is an inverse relationship between the binding of O2 and the binding of BPG. We can therefore describe another binding process for hemoglobin. Figure 5 to 17 effect of BPG binds at a site distant from the oxygen binding site and regulates the O2 binding affinity of hemoglobin in relation to the PATU in the lungs. BPG is important in the physiological adaptation to the lower PATU at high altitudes. For a healthy human at sea level, the binding of O2 to hemoglobin is regulated such that the amount of O2 delivered to the tissues is nearly 40% of the maximum that could be carried by the blood, Fig, 5 to 17. Imagine that this person is suddenly transported from sea level to an altitude of 4,500 meters, where the PATU is considerably lower. The delivery of O2 to the tissues is now reduced. However, after just a few hours at the higher altitude, the BPG concentration in the blood has begun to rise, leading to a decrease in the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. This adjustment in the BPG level has only a small effect on the binding of O2 in the lungs, but a considerable effect on the release of O2 in the tissues. As a result, the delivery of oxygen to the tissues is restored to nearly 40% of the O2 that can be transported by the blood.
The situation is reversed when the person returns to sea level. The BPG concentration in erythrocytes also increases in people suffering from hypoxia, lowered oxygenation of peripheral tissues due to inadequate functioning of the lungs or circulatory system. The site of BPG binding to hemoglobin is the cavity between the beta subunits in the T state, Fig. 5 to 18. This cavity is lined with positively charged amino acid residues that interact with the negatively charged groups of BPG. Unlike O2, only one molecule of BPG is bound to each hemoglobin tetramer. BPG lowers hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen by stabilizing the T state. The transition to the R state narrows the binding pocket for BPG, precluding BPG binding. In the absence of BPG, hemoglobin is converted to the R state more easily. Figure 5 to 18 binding of 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate to deoxyhemoglobin. A. BPG binding stabilizes the T state of deoxyhemoglobin. The negative charges of BPG interact with several positively charged groups, shown in blue in this surface contour image, that surround the pocket between the beta subunits on the surface of deoxyhemoglobin in the T state. B. The binding pocket for BPG. Regulation of oxygen binding to hemoglobin by BPG has an important role in fetal development. Because a fetus must extract oxygen from its mother's blood, fetal hemoglobin must have greater affinity than the maternal hemoglobin for O2. The fetus synthesizes gamma subunits rather than beta subunits, forming alpha-2 gamma-2 hemoglobin. This tetramer has a much lower affinity for BPG than normal adult hemoglobin, and a correspondingly higher affinity for O2. Sickle cell anemia is a molecular disease of hemoglobin. The hereditary human disease sickle cell anemia demonstrates strikingly the importance of amino acid sequence in determining the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures of globular proteins, and thus their biological functions. Almost 500 genetic variants of hemoglobin are known to occur in the human population all but a few are quite rare. Most variations consist of differences in a single amino acid residue. The effects on hemoglobin structure and function are often minor, but can sometimes be extraordinary. Each hemoglobin variation is the product of an altered gene. Variant genes are called alleles. Because humans generally have two copies of each gene, an individual may have two copies of one allele, thus being homozygous for that gene, or one copy of each of two different alleles, thus heterozygous. Figure 5 to 19A comparison of A, uniform, cup-shaped, normal erythrocytes and B, the variably shaped erythrocytes seen in sickle cell anemia, which range from normal to spiny or sickle-shaped. Sources, A, A, Sard slash science source. B, Jackie Lewin, Royal Free Hospital slash science source. Sickle cell anemia occurs in individuals who inherit the allele for sickle cell hemoglobin from both parents. The erythrocytes of these individuals are fewer and also abnormal. In addition to an unusually large number of immature cells, the blood contains many long, thin, sickle-shaped erythrocytes, Fig. 5 to 19. When hemoglobin from sickle cells, called hemoglobin S, or HBS, is deoxygenated, it becomes insoluble and forms polymers that aggregate into tubular fibers, Fig. 5 to 20. Normal hemoglobin, hemoglobin A, or HBA, remains soluble on deoxygenation. The insoluble fibers of deoxygenated HBS cause the deformed, sickle shape of the erythrocytes, and the proportion of sickled cells increases greatly as blood is deoxygenated. The altered properties of HBS result from a single amino acid substitution, a val instead of a glue residue at position 6 in the two beta chains. The R group of valine has no electric charge, whereas glutamate has a negative charge at pH 7.4. Hemoglobin S therefore has two fewer negative charges than HBA, one fewer on each beta chain. Replacement of the glue residue by val creates a sticky hydrophobic contact point at position 6 of the beta chain which is on the outer surface of the molecule. These sticky spots cause deoxy-HBS molecules to associate abnormally with each other, 
forming the long, fibrous aggregates characteristic of this disorder. Figure 5 to 20 normal and sick. Between the conformations of change in the sickle cell anemia is life-threatening and painful. People with this disease suffer repeated crises brought on by physical exertion. They become weak, dizzy, and short of breath, and they also experience heart murmurs and an increased pulse rate. The hemoglobin content of their blood is only about half the normal value of 15 to 16 g 100 ml, because sickled cells are very fragile and rupture easily, this results in anemia, lack of blood. An even more serious consequence is that capillaries become blocked by the long, abnormally shaped cells, causing severe pain and interfering with normal organ function a major factor in the early death of many people with the disease. Without medical treatment, people with sickle cell anemia usually die in childhood. Curiously, the frequency of the sickle cell allele in populations is unusually high in certain parts of Africa. Investigation into this matter led to the finding that when heterozygous, the allele confers a small but significant resistance to lethal forms of malaria. The heterozygous individuals experience a milder condition called sickle cell trait. Only about 1% of their erythrocytes become sickled on deoxygenation. These individuals may live completely normal lives if they avoid vigorous exercise and other stresses on the circulatory system. Natural selection has resulted in an allele population that balances the deleterious effects of the homozygous condition against the resistance to malaria afforded by the heterozygous condition. Summary 5.1 Reversible Binding of a Protein To a ligand, oxygen-binding proteins Protein function often entails interactions with other molecules. A protein binds a molecule, known as a ligand, at its binding site. Proteins may undergo conformational changes when a ligand binds, a process called induced fit. In a multi-subunit protein, the binding of a ligand to one subunit may affect ligand binding to other subunits. Ligand binding can be regulated. Myoglobin contains a heme prosthetic group, which binds oxygen. Heme consists of a single atom of Fe2 plus coordinated within a porphyrin. Oxygen binds to myoglobin reversibly. This simple reversible binding can be described by an association constant Ka or a dissociation constant KD. For a monomeric protein such as myoglobin, the fraction of binding sites occupied by a ligand is a hyperbolic function of ligand concentration. Normal adult hemoglobin has four heme-containing subunits, two alpha and two beta, similar in structure to each other and to myoglobin. Hemoglobin exists in two interchangeable structural states, T and R. The T state is most stable when oxygen is not bound. Oxygen binding promotes transition to the R state. Oxygen binding to hemoglobin is both allosteric and cooperative. As O2 binds to one binding site, the hemoglobin undergoes conformational changes that affect the other binding sites an example of allosteric behavior. Conformational changes between the T and R states, mediated by subunit-subunit interactions, result in cooperative binding. This is described by a sigmoid binding curve and can be analyzed by a Hill plot. Two major models have been proposed to explain the cooperative binding of ligands to multi-subunit proteins, the concerted model and the sequential model. Hemoglobin also binds H plus and CO2 resulting in the formation of ion pairs that stabilize the T-state and lessen the protein's affinity for O2, the Bohr effect. Oxygen binding to hemoglobin is also modulated by 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate, which binds to and stabilizes the T-state. Sickle cell anemia is a genetic disease caused by a single amino acid substitution, GLU6 to VAL6, in each beta chain of hemoglobin. The change produces a hydrophobic patch on the surface of the hemoglobin that causes the molecules to aggregate into bundles of fibers. This homozygous condition results in serious medical complications.